gets you through my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide's Jody and Hazy on Nova. Joe's, let's talk about some of the most iconic movies that you've ever seen. And one of them has to be Finding Nemo. Yeah. Isn't it gorgeous? You always think, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. You're like, Dory's got some issues. Yeah. My goodness, she's got some issues, but she's so lovable. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, some real yeah. STM issues, short yeah. memory. Spoiling. And I can relate to that. <laughs> your Dory. Oh, my gosh. You- <laughs> well, that is... Yeah. Congratulations to us. We've just uncovered something. Every lap around the fishbowl is a new adventure for me. <laughs> yeah. Some serious short-term memory issues, but mm. very lovable. Oh, that's um, nice. Marlon's the dad, of course. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got Nemo, the yeah. son, the yep. one and only son. And Coral was his wife. Yes. In the beginning. Um, there's a very, very traumatic scene right at the start mm. where he's got all the babies. He's in his idyllic little situation where um, he's got the prime real estate um, and he's sitting there with Coral as well. And then all of a sudden... A big bad barracuda fish just absolutely turns that scene upside down. Corey, don't. They'll be fine. Just get inside you right now. And then as we know from there, it's just Marlon and Nemo. Yeah. But then Nemo goes missing and he has to go find Nemo. That's the storyline. Yeah. So, <laughs> there's a few theories circulating the internet right now which are absolutely going to blow your mind. Is this what you've been up to in your spare time? <laughs> 100%. I call it research for work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I watch kids' movies sure. at home and call it work. So, we just assume that the Barracuda destroyed the family. Yeah. And took uh, Marlon's wife as well, Coral. Okay. A few marine biologists have piped up. Oh, God. And where are the marine biologists when you need them? Mm. Well, finally, they're here. And a couple of them have said, well, here's the thing about this particular scene. Bear in mind, Pixar do not factually miss. Okay. They do not factually miss. They know exactly what they're doing for every single little detail. Um, These guys have said, hey, guess what, guys? Unfortunately, Barracuda, they do not eat clownfish. Oh. And they do not eat clownfish eggs. So what was the demise then? Who was responsible? On top of that, guess who does eat clownfish and clownfish eggs? Who? Clownfish. Right. The male clownfish will tend to tend to the eggs until they hatch. He'll scope out any unviable or damaged eggs, and yes, he'll eat those if he doesn't think they're going to be good. Sometimes all the eggs will be eaten, especially during the parent's first few attempts, but in particular, the female is very, very prone to eating eggs and then shifting off into a different space. So, here's a c- conclusion. It wasn't the barracuda. It was his wife. What? Who destroyed the family. Why? Let that just sink in and blow your mind. Why? Because she's a greedy little clownfish. (laughs) (laughs) And she got hungry and ate all of the eggs except for Nemo. Wow. Isn't that just shocking? It's a very sinister theory you've come up with there. That is the latest theory during the rounds on the internet. Because like I said, Pixar factually do not miss. Mm. They would not make a mistake like that. Do you know what my takeaway from this is? What's that? You should never have a day off Channel 7 if this is what you get up to. <laughs> These are the conspiracy theories that I'm sort of cooking up in the background. Mm, right. But that's from the internet. There you go. 13, 24, 10. What did you just learn or learn later in life uh-huh. that really shocked your pants off? Okay. Um, can we call producer Emily to the stage? Good morning to you, Em. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Um, so this one was uh, something my best friend actually texted me during the week. Um the numbers on a toaster. Yeah. I think we all assume that's just how toasty. That's like the you heat, want your it? level of toastiness. Yeah. So if you want it light brown, if you want it char grilled, whatever. Six yeah. is really, really going for it. It's just how long it's cooking in there. One on the toaster knob is one minute. No, it's not. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. The internet told me. So it must be true. Wow. We've, we've got a toaster in the kitchen. We should test this. We thing. should test this. We should definitely test this. There too. is another one which I think is something that I literally only learned two minutes ago. Butt load is an actual measurement. Butt load? Yep. So, <laughs> so if you say I've got a butt load of milk, that yeah. would that would mean you have 477 <laughs> litres of milk. Wow. You are welcome. That's good, isn't it? Uh, that's, they used to use that for um, wine casks and barrels. So right. a butt load is 477 litres. You give yeah, us a butt load of wine, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I had a buttload of wine at Josh, <laughs> Josh's wedding. Yeah, camera guy. Yes, you did. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was a couple of buttloads, actually. <laughs> Good stuff. 13, 24, 10. 
What did you just learn about mm. that really shocked you? Maybe you've just learnt or you learnt at a later part of your life. You went, oh, my gosh, it completely changes everything. So that clownfish ate its own babies, is that what you're saying? That is the theory because clownfish will eat clownfish and female clownfish will tend to eat their own eggs. Mm. But barracudas do not. Okay. I know, shocking. It's good stuff. Are you me. okay? Is it's that a tear? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on there? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's definitely not a tear. Well, we have established that you're Dory, so I'm pretty sure you forgot that whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Polly, we are asking the question this morning on 13 24 10. What did you just find out later in life? Go for it. Um, can confirm um, clownfish are very territorial in their own species <laughs> and they're born non gendered. Um, and the more dominant one turns into a female. Well, there you go. Whoa. That, <laughs> yeah, kind, that okay. makes a lot of sense. I've lost a couple of clownfish myself because the female has killed them. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So can you can you confirm that this is probably what happened to Marlon's family? <laughs> oh, no, it's <laughs> not <laughs> real. When I was learning this myself with my own experiences, this was only last year, so I lost about two or three, um... Yeah, I got to thinking about Finding Nemo, and I'm like, oh, my God, it wasn't the Barracuda. <laughs> oh, there you go. Wow. see. It's all coming together. Mind blown. Thank it you. It is all coming together. Thank you so much, Holly. Let's go to Robin from Diamond Creek. Good morning. Morning. How are you doing? We're good. What did you learn later in life that you didn't know? Uh, that the letter W is called W because it's two U's put together. Oh, oh my U. God. Oh. It is so simple. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's so simple. <laughs> How do we not yeah. know that? <laughs> I've never put any thought into it, but there you go. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. That is yeah. incredible. So it's just two little U's together. Kathar's W. W. Incredible, Robin. Thank you so much. Would you agree, Robin, that when you break it down, it kind of seems a little bit lazy, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that it what? Sorry? It does seem a little bit lazy in terms of when we're inventing letters. It does, yeah. Yeah, it oh. could, could be a little bit more original, for yeah. sure. That's Thank okay. you, Robin. Let's go to Shelley. Hey. Good morning. Go for it. What'd you learn? I learned where the saying Mad as a Hatter came from. Where's it from? Um, well, apparently when they used to mould the felt hat, they used to put mercury in to help the process, and then people would wear the, the hats with mercury in, and they'd either drive them around the bend. And go cray There you go. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Hey, um, hey, Shelley, do you know where the saying mad as Jody before she's eaten comes from? <laughs> <laughs> We're still trying to work it out. Oh, you're on fire today, aren't you? Oh, thank you very much. Oh, dear. Good morning, David. What did you learn later in life? Hi, yeah. Um, I didn't realise that the honeycomb in violet crumbles and stuff is different to the honeycomb <laughs> that comes out of bees' hives. Yeah. <laughs> It's genuine. Yeah. This is a lesson learned. I think this might be a male thing as well, but I reckon there was a time as a youngster as well, David, where you're like, here we go, I'm just going to feast on some delicious honeycomb. And then you quickly realise it's just wax with honey on it. Well, I just didn't realise there weren't that many bees out there and I was watching Better Homes and Gardens and Ed's like, oh, we're going to make honeycomb tonight. I'm like, what is this guy on about? And I was thinking, I was absolutely fuming. Uh, anyway, but, and I was a grown-up. Yeah, you know, what a lesson learned. What a betrayal, David. <laughs> it was. It was. I'm like, aren't we just getting it out of the hive and covering it in chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little purple wrap on it. All of a sudden, bang, there's your violet crumble. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, David. Samantha, what did you learn later in life? I learned when I was 19 or 20 years old that pickles are cucumbers. Yep. Yeah. Jody, you're, you're looking like you didn't know this. Wait, pickles are cucumbers? Yep. Mm. How do you? Yeah. How? Pickled. How? Just pickled in like vinegar or something? Uh huh. So yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> oh no! Oh so, so, no! Look, wait. this is Jody. To describe Jody's expression right now is <laughs> mind blown. So pickles are like those little baby cukes and they've just been soaked in vinegar and then yeah. put into a jar. Well, sometimes they're not even that. They're the big ones. They're just soaked in a jar. Pickled. Oh it's God. pickled cucumbers. Pickles are pickled cucumbers. Oh, well, flip me over and call me Hazel. <laughs> I did not know that. I did there not know go. that. Blow your mind, doesn't oh, it? Thank you, Samantha. Because I reckon, as a youngster, I learned this when I was eating pickles, loving them, and then saying to someone how much I hate cucumbers. Yeah, and I'm like, well, the same thing. And I was like, how very dear. That's so not. Goodness gracious. Mm. This has been so enlightening this morning. I know how educational. But you know, I'm going to forget it in about five minutes oh, anyway. I'll remind you at about nine o'clock. I reckon <laughs> you'll go pickles and cucumbers. I'll be like, what? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> 
Here's what you're waking up to, Adelaide. News. In the news today. Breaking news. Breaking news. What's in the news today? Your host, Snooze News. So this is where we get you up to date with all the information, the latest in news from the last 12 to 24 hours. And, Abs, you never want to start with one of these stories. No, it's absolutely horrible. So there's a major police investigation has been launched after a young Adelaide girl died. So she's a five-year-old. So emergency services scrambled to a housing trust property at Volta Avenue at Seaton just before four o'clock yesterday. Following reports, the five-year-old girl was found unresponsive. Also disturbing, it was reported by another child in the house. So. Yeah, this is interesting, and there's word as well today that maybe the child isn't from, she didn't live in that home. Okay. Um, but no one's been arrested, there hasn't been any charges laid or anything yet, but it's one that we'll definitely be watching this morning. And also major crimes say they're, they're involved um, because of the age of the child, so yeah. Yeah. I'll watch this space for this story, but it's a horrible one. Very, very sad. Uh, heading in a different direction, obviously we're on weather watch today because it's going Woo! to finally see some rain across South Australia. A little bit is um, happening across the skies at the moment, but it's set to ramp up from sunrise. Producer M drove through Mount Barker this morning. She said it was super windy and a uh, bit of uh, debris on the road, so just be careful there. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can I just say something? Can I just say something? <laughs> great for the garden. <laughs> <laughs> well, the farmers need it. We are desperate. We are so desperate for it, so it's good. Um, but just keep an eye out for, obviously, roads are going to be slippery, so we do have a road weather alert out. There's some power outages as well affecting around 600 homes and businesses in North Brighton, Oaklands Park, Summerton Park and Warradale. Um, so there's some lights out across that region as well, so just be careful if you're driving this morning. Um, it is going to be a top of 22 at the moment, though, so that's great, but it is going to drop as we head into the day. So, yeah, good weather chat. So Certainly had a little power outage in here this morning, but that's okay. That's another story for another day. <laughs> that's all right. We're solar powered. We'll fire through. You better believe that. Um, that is your post snooze news. Just a quick reminder as well. Port Adelaide tickets. Yeah. Oh, hottest tickets in town right now before the Matildas take over tomorrow night. But that's okay. We're living in the moment. Mm. We've got some tickets to give away just after eight o'clock. Port Adelaide v Carlton. Can we talk Nicki Minaj? Absolutely, we can. We've always got space for Nicki Minaj. <laughs> She has been mocked um, and received some very mixed reviews from fans after she was asked. She asked for a moment of silence for her dear friend, Princess Diana. Yes, you heard Bird Turd. She said, Princess Diana is my dear friend. Wait, the late Princess Diana? Yes. And we're talking very late. Yeah. And so um, she called for this moment of silence and then posted the video on TikTok. And here's some of the comments underneath. A dear friend of mine, question mark, <laughs> she been dead since 1997, one person wrote. She gone, sister. <laughs> she gone. A dear friend of mine, she was 14 when she died, someone said on X. Goodness me. I, so there you go, she was 14 years old when her good friend, her Princess Diana, unfortunately passed. I feel like I have experience in this space because you also like to, I don't know, boast that you're dear friends with certain people. Oh, give me a spell. What do you mean? Oh, I, I thought you were going to dob yourself in no, here. No, 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 no. No, because how often have you said on this show that your your cousin is Darren Hayes yeah. from Savage Girl? <laughs> so the thing about that is you 100% don't know that he's not. No. Could he be? Well, the last names we match up. Know. We're both songbirds. Um, you also <laughs> like to claim that Ryan Fitzgerald is your BFF. Well... Is he not? No. No. <laughs> well, okay. In fact, I think last time we went to the Harvest Rock Festival, he ghosted you. Yeah, he did. He did half. ghost, didn't yeah. he, after about five minutes. So I thought me and Fitzy were super tight, and we always mm. sort of flirt with the whole, oh, I come down south, and I was like, my phone's on, brother. Yeah. Where is, <laughs> where's the invite? You have also been known to claim that you're going to marry Jason Horn Francis. So yes. there we go. You and Nicki Minaj, one and the same. It's a bit of an arranged marriage, I think, with Jason Horn Francis. But mm. just watch this space, all right? Yeah. It's very one-sided at the minute, but I'm just sort of chipping away at things. Um, yeah, actually, one thing does come to mind in terms of my short, ineffective stint at the Sydney Swans. Mm. Do you remember a bloke, and of course you do, because you, even if you have a slight knowledge of football, you know who he is, Michael Magico Lachlan. Are you just saying I've got a slight knowledge of football? I'm saying you even if you did. Whack me? Everyone know you have a good knowledge, but even if you didn't know football, you'd know who Magico Lachlan is. Yeah. Mickey O. Yeah. So one of the greatest swans to ever do it. Oh, no. So I was there for two years. Oh, no. And you, you couldn't meet a more lovable character. Mm. Like Mikio, everybody loved him. If you didn't love Mikio, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. And everybody absolutely idolised him. I can't tell you just how low I was in the food chain at the Swans. Oh, I have a good understanding. I, yeah, <laughs> I was a rookie getting paid twenty five thousand dollars a year to live in Sydney, and I wore number forty eight. <laughs> 
<laughs> you didn't think the numbers went that high, no, did you? I did not. So two years with Mickey O, and you just get around him as much as you possibly could because he was just this absolute giant celebrity. It was Barry Hall, Adam Goods, and Mickey O. Mm-hmm. And Mickey O might have been at the top right. just because he was so lovable. Yeah. Anyway, I moved to South Australia the year after I got delisted, and I played bro- uh, footy with his little brother, mm. Alex Stengel, who okay. was an absolute jet as well. Yeah. And it was Stenger's 21st that year, and Mickey O was there. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I remember you marching can't. up to the brand. and I was like, what's up, brother? Mickey O. We had this nice little conversation, and then halfway through, he goes, anyway, um, so what's your name, brother? <laughs> Oh, my God. Two years. Oh, my God. I've never been. And I had to introduce myself again. Yeah. And I told him I was once for two years. Yeah. And even then, like a minute later, he was like, oh, yeah. So there you go. And then you're like. We've been in the change rooms and in the showers together. You've seen my doodle. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> if it's you that was studying me inappropriately. That's me. <laughs> anyway, I'm catching up with Darren Hayes this afternoon. He's going to love this. He's going to love this story. Joe, something floated across my desk the other day, uh, and I was reminded as well of something that's happening in Norway, which is a really, really good thing. And like we always say, um, the best way is in Norway. It's their national slogan. It's their slogan, and it makes sense. So it's been going for a while now. In 2021, there's a law that requires any advertisement featuring edited image images must clearly label them as such. So this particular legislation, in effect for several years, aims to combat societal pressure to conform to unrealistic beauty standards, especially, and this is the big one, amongst young people. So when you see an ad for something and it's got a ridiculously handsome model or gorgeous girl on there that clearly looks fake, Mm. it needs to say, hey, by the way, this is fake with a little message in the corner. I love this. Yeah. Why can't this be a natural, a genuine standard in Australia? And it would really, really save so much angst and anxiety amongst our young people. I just, I feel for our young girls and young boys at the moment because so much of what they're surrounded by on social media isn't real, you guys. It has been airbrushed within the bejesus and... It's just putting so many unrealistic expectations. But I think the same of influencers. They yep. should declare when they're photoshopped. I think the same of Princess Kate. She should declare when she's photoshopped. <laughs> <laughs> she took it to the next level. No, but, you, I mean, you talk about the Kardashian generation. They're, that's not what they look it's like, fake. you guys. It's fake. It's completely fake. And there's some good memes going around. Um, anyone can be beautiful. You just need enough money for surgery. So that true. is the Kardashians. Yeah. So it links in with social media unbelievably. Also, people post posting only the unbelievably positive aspects of their life mm. to make it a little bit unrealistic what's happening. Well, it's a highlight reel, isn't it? A hundred percent. But these photos, and I want to ask you because it it would break my heart. Right now, I've got a, a six-year-old boy who is, he's all about comfort mm. and hopefully he stays in that direction when it comes to looks and fashion. Yeah. Comfort first. Well, if he's anything like his dad. <laughs> yeah, it's all about comfort. <laughs> But I've got a three-year-old as well, and it would break my heart to know that when she got to the age of probably sort of 11 or 12 onwards, that she would be anxious and, God forbid, would suffer depression because of these unrealistic standards. Well, to extend on that, all the young girls these days too, especially mine, 11 and 12-year-old, are all into the beauty products. Because there are so many YouTube videos 11 and and, and TikTok videos, and you ask them what they want for Christmas and all their birthdays. Mecca products. See, that's... Um, I I don't know how many times I have to say to them, your skin is so perfect and pristine and beautiful. You don't need retinol. You're 11 years old. But it is such a massive influence on the net. So how can you handle it? You've got all this to come. 100%. But how can you handle it? Because you've got an army of girls Mm. ranging from all different ages. Yeah. So you'd probably know how to handle each and every time zone. I think I've tried and failed um, a lot with just to give them the message that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're big or small, short or tall, doesn't matter, it's what's inside that counts and it's your heart and your sense of humour and your kindness. But I just feel like it's falling a little bit on deaf ears. Um, So there's a very positive message in this, in that all the photos and stuff that you basically see are pretty much going to be fake and they're unrealistic. Mm. Um, Love that to be a genuine standard in Australia. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? And I'll leave you with this. Next time you see a Jodie and Hazy advertisement, look at the photos. Completely fake. Mm. Fake. Mm. That's, that's, That's not me.
No. That's me brushed. <laughs> no, that, that is you brushed, but didn't you ask them to brush out a little bit? Of the, I did as well. <laughs> they <laughs> brushed. Hey, they got rid of some of my grey hairs. <laughs> and I said I had a little spot on the side of my head because I got a little bit of alopecia. I had a bit of a patch, like a coin size. And I was like, just get rid of that. And they left it in. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bit of truth to it. week for Battle of the Bangers where two songs go head to head against each other is... Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Go Tillies. So, let's think of the most Australian song that you can possibly think of. And I've taken it one step further this week because I've gone the most local song that you could think of from probably the biggest hip-hop band this country's ever seen. Okay. Yeah. Locally? Yeah. Oh, you've channeled into the bloody Hilltop Hoods, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I have. Oh, good, good selection. Or the boys. It's hard to miss with the Hilltop. The boys that you claim to be mates with. Ah, remember that? You yeah, remember I, I, I sat next to Dan Smith <laughs> yeah, at, a <laughs> at a function at the Sammy D Foundation dinner one night, and I, by the end of it, thought that we were genuinely best mates. Yeah. And then we interviewed the Hilltops not long after, mm. and I just wonder, I just wonder if Dan Smith even remembers. No me. real recollection, I don't think. <laughs> He's a good guy, though. Yeah. All right. I lost him. Just by the way, I lost him when I fanboyed you over him. Yeah. Because I was like, hey, some of your songs, can we talk about that? Yeah. And he didn't physically do it, but I was like, I sort of felt like a bit of a, oh, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. God, you've you've had some real hits and misses with people that you admire. Like that time you met Brian Taylor. (laughs) Yeah, that didn't go as planned. Hey, we were... Sort of saw things going differently in my head with that one. We worked together at Seven Sport, yeah. Like, good on you, mate. Good on you. I think he champed me at one stage. Did so he champ you? Yeah. Might have supported me as well. So good on your sport. A lot of people that you feel like you've had a connection with that you really haven't. Anyway, play my song, Hilltop Hoods. It is nosebleed section. Oh, nice. Full That's good. The front. That's good, Jodes. In the nosebleed section. That Bit of nosebleed section. Yep. That is iconic to South Australia. Mm-hmm. And like you say, to the this hip-hop industry the in Australia, the, the Hilltops the front, genuinely put Aussie hip-hop down. on the map. You took it to the next level. Really talking my song up. I like this from you. Jeez, you know what? I really, really like your song too. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. So while we are talking about iconic South Australian bands, yeah. and given it is on theme as well mm-hmm. for the Valo 500... So two iconic South Australian bands, two extremely different songs. Is that K-San? That's K-San. Okay, Cold checking. Chisel. Just checking. Don't pretend like you don't know which Cold Chisel song this is. Yeah, mate. I, I just I thought you might modernise things a little bit, you know. What do you mean modernise things? Just go go with someone a little more recent. I'm not even sure um, which song's older. K Sound or Nosebleed Section? No. <laughs> Nosebleed Section's pretty K-San. old. K Sound, no. How dare you tell me to modernise things? They're celebrating 50 years together. Who's that? The Hilltops? No. A <laughs> uh, couple right. of good songs, though. Get voting, please. Jodie and Hazy Instagram page. What do you want to hear tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock? Ooh, Hilltop Hoods, Nosebleed Section, or K-San by Cold Chisel. This score, as we sit here today, is 11 to 6 in my favour. But, but you're coming a, off a win. There is a trend. I think I've won the last couple, actually. Have you? Are you yeah. two in a row for you? Yeah, I think so. Is that right? I'm not sure Screw about that, Jones. Screw your nose up, Producer Emmett, mate. Yeah, not sure about that one. Do you want to hear something funny? Yeah, go on. Case Hahn was released in 1978, <laughs> and <laughs> the No Sweet section was released in 2003. <laughs> Insane, though, Abs. 78 to 2003, what a blur. Am I right? Well, for Jody, it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> that's wow. what it's all about. That's good stuff. That's good banter. Love you. Uh, good stuff. And that's why you should vote for my song. Mm-mm. Doesn't make sense, does it? No, it doesn't. All right, get voting out, Jody Hazy. <laughs> He's just texting my little four-year-old who is on her way to kindy as we speak, and the most magnificent thing is happening there at the moment to her little kindy, and they do just the teachers, the educators there are so wonderful. Um, they're teaching the kids all about Reconciliation Week because it is, of course, this week. Mm. And which is really lovely. So when they get to kindy this morning, they'll greet each other in Ghana language. That's really nice. And they've been teaching them all their different body parts and how to say them in Indigenous language, which is so beautiful. And so we're sitting on the couch last night and we were just talking about it all. And I said, tell me what all the different names for the different parts of your face are. And that's what she said. What's your eyes? Your eyes is Mena. 
What about your ears? Your ears is airy. What about your nose? Muddler. Muddler? What about your head? Your head is my garden. Okay. And so what do you sing every time you get to school? The garden and the village. Oh, well done. Look at that. She's four. So I just love that. We didn't, certainly didn't have anything like this when we went to school back in the day. Shut up, Abby. Oh, 100%. <laughs> we just kept the mouth shut. I am only saying that because that was your cue for an age joke. Yeah. Um, it's good, though. I mean, for those who are probably unaware, mm. and we're not all 100% up to date with everything, so National Reconciliation Week yep. is a time for all Australians to learn about our shared histories, cultures and achievements and to explore how each of us can contribute to achieving reconciliation in Australia. And I completely agree with you, Jodes. Yeah. Um, we didn't have this when I was a youngster. No. But if we did, where we could come together and share information and mm. celebrate, it would be a really beautiful thing. My daughter went to ELC the other day. Yeah. In her brand new yellow dress, which has a big smiley face in the middle and all different colours through the centre of it. Right, as in the Indigenous flag colours. Well, in terms of all different colours to represent uh, everyone coming together. Oh, well, that's beautiful. Which is really nice. And Very she, proud of her dress too. Unfortunately, she was the only one dressed up. She was. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> she was. Little Lottie just dances to the beat of her own drum, Yeah, she? she does, but she was still proud as punch because yeah. she got to wear the new dress. Well, to all the little kindy kids going to school this morning, make sure you greet each other in that beautiful language and well done to everybody involved. You set a really high standard too. A new language at the age of four. I know. It's outrageous.